If you can't, raise your hand, please, so I know. All right, so let's begin. So last time we were talking about recursion. Um, and, but uh, today, let's go back and study a few basics. Let's review a few basics before we go back to recursion. Um, so have a look at this example. Uh, for those of you who didn't see the, the answer at the bottom at the beginning, tell me what you think the answer is. <laughs> Interesting. OK. All right. Uh, so let, let's have a look to see why, or if that's so. So we're calling f, which is this function here, right? It's this function right here. We pass 2 as the first argument. That would go into a. So a becomes 2. We pass 10 to the second argument. That goes to b. So b is now 10. And f2 then takes this argument here, which happens to be a function. OK? OK, so we take that function. And then we are going to call that function with the addition of a plus b. Now, we know that a is 2 and b is 10 the addition of which, of course, becomes 12. So underneath, you can think of it as that, right? Once it becomes 12, we then call f2, which will, the result of this will then go into this, which is result, and it will console log the result, which of course is 12, not 10. <laughs> there it is. OK? Is that clear? Um, just so that, is the font big enough for you guys? That, that too big? Good? All right. Um, so let me go into the debugger so you can see exactly what the steps are, right? Um, so let me cause a breakpoint, zoom in a bit so you can see. There, everyone can see? Good. OK. So the first step, of course, is we create the function. Second step is we call that function with a 2, a 10, and a function. Those are the three arguments that we're passing. We step in by using the down arrow. And you can see here that b is 2, oh, sorry, a is 2, b is 10, and f2 is a function, right? We do a plus b, so 2 plus 10, that's 12. Then we pass the result into f2. Step in, here we go, result is 12, right? This is what we passed from here to here. And then we console log 12. Voila. That's simple. Questions so far? Good? Let's keep going. OK, so if we understand this, so we understand this ability to pass a function. right? So a function is a value which can be passed to another function. That function can then use that function to do work. That's all we're seeing here. A function, remember, can also return a function. So let me clear this. So in the same way that I can create a function that returns a 1, 1 being a value, I can also return a string, a string, of course, being a value. I can also return a function. The function itself also being a value. So what this means is that if I do f, the result of calling f will return to me, return this, this function here. Now suppose this function takes an argument, like foo. Well, a is now referencing this function, which means I can now call a and pass in a value, like 5. So 5 will now get passed to foo, and then this function can return, for example, foo times 2. And if we console.log that, what will we get? 10. Ten. Ten, yeah. Because we passed 5 to foo, and then it ran foo, which is 5, times 2, which is 10, and returned that result, which was then, so this you can think of as turning into 10. And therefore, we console log the result, which is 10. What if I did this? Plus a, mm, 4 minus a mm, 2 times, ooh, haha, times a uh, 4, 3 is what I meant. What about now? OK, so according to order of operations in mathematics, multiplication comes, of course, before 
addition or subtraction, right? So that means we have to compute this part first, right? So what is a uh, past for calling function a with a three? Well, six. A, six, good. So this turns into a six. A with a two. Four times six. <laughs> Passing four to a. Eight. You get it. Negative uh, six. <coughs> right? If we go back, check our work. <laughs> yep, it's negative six. See? Same thing. Is that clear? <coughs> OK, so a function can return a function. Cool. What else can we do? Well, we can actually pass a value to the very first function. For example, let me pass a 9 to this very first function, which is this. Let's have that take an <coughs> argument called, well, we have foo. Let's call it zoo, making it up. Um, we can then use zoo from here. So we can say plus zoo. Right? So think what happens now. Well, when you call f, it will return this function. Remember this. This function is created in a context in a context in which zoo is 9. Right? That means when we then call a, which is calling this function here, and we pass a 5, well we know that foo is 5. We know 2 is 2. Zoo, we do not have in this context. So what do we do? We go up. Exactly. We go up one step. And if we go up one step, we get to this. And what was the value of the zoo? Nine. Exactly. 9. It's that simple, right? So therefore, if we do a5, now what should we get? 19. Boom. 19. Right? Again, because f is not, so we call the original with a 9, so zoo becomes a 9. So you can think of this as a 9 in this case. Foo is the 5, so we do 5, and then you just do the math. Simple. Yes? I'm telling you, easy stuff. You just have to figure it out. Really simple stuff. OK. Um, should I make you guys do long math? Let's see. No? All right, let, oh, yes, someone, yes. A, OK, let me do this. A2 times, hang on, don't answer yet, times A4. Uh, but let me go, oh, sorry, there. Now what is the answer? Fifty-one. 42, put out the calculator. Do, 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 do. <laughs> OK, so let's see why. Let's see why. So remember that zoo is 9, right? So let's, because this is inside of uh, parentheses, we have to compute this first, right, according to mathematical rules. OK, so let's compute A5 first. That's 19, OK. Do you see why that's 19? Yes, everyone sees it. OK, how about A2? 13. 13, right. Because foo is now 2. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 9 is 13. Good. 13. What's 19 plus 13? So this whole thing becomes 32. And then what's A4? 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 9. And then you multiply the two, and you get 544. Simple? Easy, right? No problem. Good. OK, so now, all, once you understand this, we can just take it one more level deep. So here, we can have this return another function, which also takes, let's see, we have zoo, we have foo, let's do bar. Right? Again, just, or boo, OK, boo. <laughs> OK, all right, so um, 
So now const b will take a, I don't know, 4. And then const c will take b3. And then we can run, hang on. So this, so the first one will return this guy. So this will go into a. A will run, and it will get this guy, and that will go into B. And then when we run B to the 3, we get C, and then we can print C. And let's have C be return zoo plus foo plus boo. <laughs> yeah. 16. You see how this works? Not scary anymore, is it? Any function can return a function, and then that function can return a function, and then that function can blah, 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 right? OK, how about this? Let's have this take a function, a function, which will console log an argument that it will take, which let's call it a. Now, this now takes a, a function called, let's say, func. And instead of returning, it will call that func with this value. What did we just do? Does anyone care to explain? No, <laughs> he's like, hell no, not me. OK, look, it's, nothing has changed except this last function, right? We know what's happening here. That function takes zoo, which is 9. Right? So 9 goes into zoo, fine. We then return a function, which we called with a 4. So foo takes a 4. That returned a function, which was assigned to b. We then called b, we called this function, where we passed 3 to boo. So boo is now 3. And func is this function here. With me so far? Then all we do is we still add zoo to foo to boo, right? 9 plus 4 plus 3. But then we call this. And what is this? It's this. And what that does is it takes this value here, puts it into A, or passes it as an argument to the function, right? And then what does it do? It prints to the console that value. It prints A, which has the value of zoo plus foo plus boo. So we got 16 in the console. Anyone confused with what I just said? OK, fine, no problem. Good, good, very good. OK. Um, let's use a debugger. I think that might help clear things up. So OK. So let's see exactly what is happening. Hang on, let me make this nice and big. OK. Everyone can see the code? Good. So we create a function. That's all we care about right now. It's a function that has been assigned to or been put into f. right? So f is now a name that means that function. OK, so then we call f with a 9. So let's step in. What happens? Well, it's going to return that. right? And notice that zoo has a value of 9 now. Good. So we step out. Then we call the result of what we got from calling f, which is this function here, right? So let's step in. Sure enough, now we're inside of this function, and we have 4 as the input. And we called it foo. So now zoo has 9, foo has 4. Fine. It returns another function, which is why b has a function in it. See? You can see what kind of what's in there. a has a function in it, which takes foo. B has a function in it which takes boo and func, and f is the original function that takes zoo. You see how useful this is? It tells you exactly what's in every variable. Pretty cool. I wish I had this during exams. <laughs> I could just read and copy paste. OK, so then now let's actually call b. So now, so now in this case, boo is 3, and func is this function. It's this function right here that has been passed to here. So now func means, look, func means this function. So what do we do? Well, this will run first, zoo plus foo plus boo, right? So 9 plus 4 plus 3. And then we will call func. So let's step into func. 
There it is. It takes 16 because that's the result. That's what we passed in, right? This went here, 16. And then we will print 16. That's it. Talk to me, front row. Oh, I see a, a, a face of confusion. What, which part was unclear? Tell me. It's OK. Talk to me. How cross C is referred to the second line that there is a return function foo? How we know that B is uh, concerned with return function foo? How do we know that B? OK, let's do this one more time. One second. I'll answer your question in a second. So when we do next here, we see that A. Let's look what's inside of A. A has the function that takes foo in, in it, right? In other words, it has this function here, right? So this function returned this function. Yes? Does that make sense? OK, good. So you can see that A has this in it. And this is this entire thing, right? It has a start and end. Fair? Good. So then we're going to call this function here by calling A. Oh, yes, sir. A is function, yeah, exactly, yeah. So the thing on the side will tell you what's, what goes into each variable, if, if that's what you meant, yeah? So now B has whatever calling A returned. And what was A? Well, A was this function that took foo, so it returns this, which sure enough, that's what B is. It's the one that takes boo and funk. Huh, John? Yeah? OK, so follow me here. Now we're going to call this function here, where we're going to pass 3. That's going to go to boo. And this function here, as, an arg as a second argument, that will go into func. Yes? OK, so let's step into that. So now func, where is it? Func has function a. That's this here. And boo has 3. We do zoo plus foo plus bar. Well, we can see here that, hang on. That zoo has 9, foo has 4, and boo has 3, right? So now if we step in, we can see that the result of adding those is 16, and we console log 16. OK. Question so far? If you're slightly confused, it's OK. If you're very confused, talk to me. If you're just a little bit confused, let's keep going, and we'll, we'll add more and more. And I think maybe you, you'll, the idea will form in your head. If not, uh, it's my fault, remember? If you don't understand, it's my fault. So ask, <laughs> demand, and I will, I will explain it, no problem. And then come to office hours. Good? So uh, let's see, what else do we want to do? So function, taking in a function. Yeah, OK. By the way, incidentally, let me tell you guys this. Uh, there's, a, there's a method called curry, which, which, which uh, isn't named after the sauce, curry. It's, it's named after, after the person who invented this method. And the idea is this. It's, it's actually something we've already done. So you create a function, which takes some argument. And what it will do is return another function that will take another argument. And the idea behind this is this. Remember th that on the very first day, we were talking about solving problems, right? And in order to solve a problem, you need information, right? And in order to, to solve the problem, you need all the information. Fair? OK. So, but imagine you only have part of the information and not the entire thing. One mechanism in code that you can use to figure that out is this. So let's say I want to add two numbers together. I know the first number. I don't know the second. That's a problem, right? So here's what I can do. I can call f with the first number, which I know. And let's say that number is 12. And I can store that somewhere. Then much, much, much later, 
That's not code. Uh, I can then call, once I know the second number, I can then call B with that number, which is, let's say, 24. You see? Think about what we've done here. So what we did is we called F, this function here, with the number that we knew. It stored that in A, so it remembered A, right? It then gave us another function which we stored into B. So it returned that function that we then put into B. Later, when we found out what that second number is, we called B. But remember, B, now we'll take 24. For A, does it have A within this context here? No. So it goes up one, and it does there. And what was that A? It was this. So it remembered that first value, right? So currying is a mechanism by which you can solve a problem little bit at a time. Or I should say you can gather the information about the problem a little bit at a time and then compute it at the very end. Remember that word, currying, and like use it during programming interviews. You're, the people who interview you will be very impressed. <laughs> say I know recursion and I know currying. And they're like, wow, yeah. you must be super smart. Good? Does everyone understand currying? Yes? Again, it's nothing more than taking information a little bit at a time and then computing it at the end. Good? Yes? A bug. OK, I'm listening. What do you mean? So by the way, just a bug for is a fancy way of saying a mistake in your logic. Yes. Fair. OK. Well. I mean, so one thing that can be said is it's easy to add a bug anywhere, but I'm curious. What about this specifically do you see as a, as a potential issue? Uh, here not. Here is OK, but uh, <laughs> when, when we go using code, uh, I think it is just something wrong. OK, do, do you, is that just intuitively you feel that way, or you just intuition? Yeah. Fair enough. OK, so intu okay, good. Intuition is good. And it, it is something that will, you will develop more and more as you program more and more. So fair enough, fair enough. Um, <clears throat> other comments or questions? OK, good. Uh, so yeah, mute your phones. All right. um, good, so we understand this idea, that we can return a function and we can do all these fancy things. OK, what if now instead of passing a 12, I passed in another function, which let's say returned 12. How can I change this code so that it worked the way the previous code worked, so that I still get the same answer? <coughs> What's going to happen when this runs? What is it going to try to add? What is B? Wait, wait, what is B? 24, right? We're going to call that, and it's going to come in 24. What is A? It's this. It's this whole, it's this, this, and it's the function. So A is a function. So what we're doing here is we're adding a function to a number. Right? My guess is that that will return a NAND. Let's, let's get rid of the syntax error and let's just see. Oh, it concatenated. OK, whatever. Long story short, it's not what we wanted, right? What we want to do is to add numbers. So what we want to do is add a 12, not concatenate this function. So how can we change the code? How can we change the Good. I, got, I saw two correct answers. What else? Yes. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Add parentheses. Add parentheses, that's right. So this is a function. If we call the function, now we've called it, right? And by calling it, it means it's going to run this. And by running, it's going to return 12. So you can think of it in your head as turning into 12. And now the rest is the same. Now 12 plus b, which was 24, et cetera. Good? And we get 36. Does that make sense? OK, what if here, instead of passing in 24, I passed in a function that returned 24. What do I have to change now? 
Right, so I have to call this function. Now once I've called it, it's going to return 24. And this will be 24. A will run, return 12, so it's 12 plus 24. Mm -hmm. I have another function here, uh, f1, which it's going to take a value. And it's going to return that value multiplied times 2. And here we're going to call f1. And we're going to add a. Go. OK, so let's go through this. So a and b, so a takes this function, which was going to return 12, and b is going to take a function that returns 24, right? OK, so a will go, so when we call a, it's going to return 12. When we call b, it's going to return 24. When we add them together, I get? Then I call f1 with 36. So val is now 36. 36 times 2? 72. So we replace that with a 72. I then call a. a is this function here, which is going to return 12. And then we add them together. Good. Good? Yes. You see? Easy. OK, so now that you understand that, uh, what does this return again? <laughs> yeah, good. OK, here's an interesting one. Hang on, let me, I want to make sure, OK, good. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. OK. So this is an example of, remember what I mentioned about composition. So composition means taking parts and putting them together. So in this case, I've created a function called circle area. It's going to try to compute the area of a circle, right? Area of a circle. But to do that, I need to use the power function, which is another function that I've made, which takes a base and an expression, right? Sorry, an exponent. Exponent. Yeah. Base and exponent. OK. So what's the answer? You don't actually have to compute it. But look at it and go, wow, that's awesome. OK. So let's debug through to see exactly how this works. OK. Hang on. OK, so look, we create the pow or power of uh, function. We create the circle area function. We then call circle area with a 10, right? Uh, so 10 is going to be our radius, right? For the, the distance from center to the end of the circle, right? OK, so we step into it. R is 10. Before we multiply times pi, right, 3.1415, right? We, then, we first need to call pow r2. So we call r with a 2, right? In other words, 10 squared. So we go into that. Is the exponent 0? No. So we don't have to worry about this case. We then multiply the base, which we see as 10, times, and then we do a recursion, right? We call ourselves with the same base, but the exponent is now 1 less. So the exponent used to be 2. 2 minus 1 is now 1, right? Good. So let's step in. The exponent is now 1. It's not 0. So we will return the base, which is 10, 
times, and we recurse again. This time it is 0, so we get 1. When this returns, the first time it returns, this will be a 1, this will be a 10. 10 times 1 is 10. Then that will return. And 10 times 10 is going to be 100, right? So 10 squared is 100. So this part right here is going to be 100, and it's going to be 100 times 3.14, blah, blah, blah. And then we print. There you go. So you just move the decimal point over two times. Did that make sense? You see how cool recursion is? This was recursion, right? We kept, call, we kept using POW again and again and again. So let's talk about POW a little bit. So let's lose circle area for a second. And let's just do POW of, uh, let's keep it simple. So let's do 2 to the power of, mm, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Let's do 4, whatever. Let's do 4 times. Um, So let's see how this will work. We create the function, we place it into pow, or we name it pow. We then call pow with a 2 and a 4. So it's 2 to the power of 4. Yeah? OK, ready? Here we go. Pow. Two, four. Everyone can see, yes? OK, so that is going to, when we go into that, is the exponent a 0? No, no. no, it's the 4, obviously. So then we return. This is going to return 2 multiplied by how? of 2 and 4 minus 1? 3. 3. Not much, eh? Good. So let's go into POW. Is the exponent a 0? No. No. So now we do 2, return, 2 multiplied by power of 2 and 3 minus 1? 2. two. Good. So now let's go into that one. We all know exponent is 2, so it's not 0. Uh, now it's base, which is 2. So this is going to return 2 multiplied by pow 2 minus 1. Good. Sorry, 2, 1. Good? Good. So let's go into that one. Is 1, 0? No. Good. Yes. yes. <laughs> 2 times power, how? 2 and 1 minus 1? Zero. 0. Good. In this case, what do we return? 1. 1, right, because if we step in here, exponent is now 0, therefore this if statement is true, and we return Right? Now let's start rolling things back up. What is this, because this function returns a 1, it basically gets replaced with the 1. 2 times 1. This function, this function returned a 2. Therefore, Two times two. Four. This function returned a four, right? So let's replace it with a four. Two times four. This function returned an eight. Therefore, its value is an eight. 2 times 8? 
So this function here returns 16, right? So its value is 16. Did that make sense? Yes. Yeah, Navesh? Jen. OK, good. That's it. That's recursion. You just keep going into a function, dup, 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 and rerunning the same logic until you hit the base case. The base case or, ter oops, the, base case or the termination case or the, the case that stops your logic, what is the base case for that function? What is the case that stops the cycle? Exactly. This right here is what will end the loop. If this did not exist, we would keep multiplying theoretically forever, realistically, until our computers froze, right? Until the browser froze, right? OK. So we get an infinite loop, a loop that does not have an end. It goes to infinity. Good? OK. Let's try a fun one, stars. So here's what I want us to write. I want us to create a function that will take a number as an argument, let's say five, and it will return a string that will have five stars in it. Yes, sir? Uh, change the uh, base times power uh, and the recursion power to a plus and give the function a string of uh, star and yeah, you just solved it. Good. All right, hang on. <laughs> no, great job. That was perfect. Uh, so other than him, <laughs> uh, so let's get rid of this code and let's start from the beginning. OK, so anytime we have to write a function, we write a function, right? So let's make one. Const f some function. Now, our function is going to return a string of stars, right? So instead of calling it f, why don't we call it something better? Give me a better name for this function. Stars. Yeah. Good. Very good. OK, so now we're going to call stars with some value, like 5. And we will print those stars to the console. Now, uh, let me do a syntax here, just so we don't fall into an infinite loop. Um, OK, so in order for me to pass a value to this function, what do I have to do? What's missing? Yeah, I need to give this value that I'm getting a name, right? So let's give it a name. Let's have the name be n. OK? OK, so here now we need to create n stars that we concatenate together, we stick together, and then create a string, right? Do you guys remember how we concatenate or stick plus. things together? Plus. Yeah. So remember that the plus operator is overloaded. Overloaded simply means it has it can behave differently depending on context. So if you put a plus between two numbers, what does it do? Adds them together. Very good. And if you put it between anything where either side is a string, stitches them together. Exactly. Concatenates them together. Sticks them together. Yeah. So what we want to do, if you think about it, is keep sticking stars together. And we want to do this n number of times, right? OK. So other than the gentleman in the front who already solved it, <laughs> suggestions. Talk to me. If n is 0, good. Return 1. Hang on, hang on, let, let him finish. And then what else? Keep going. We'll work through this. What else? OK, so think of it this way. Let's, OK, we want to return this, right? But we want this, not just this, but more of them. Plus what? Okay, so what will happen? Wait, wait, just who's the gentleman who said return one? Raise your hand. Yeah. No, oh, dude, stick with me. What will be the answer 
the way you've done it. What do you think? Wait, 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 wait. Think through. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we can put n equals 1. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Oh, let me get rid of the syntax here. Yeah, very good. So n equals 1 and return a star, right? So there are two things we can do, right? Very simply. We can simply say if n is 1, let me return the last star. Very good. What if I wanted to stick with this? How can I change something else? Yeah, you can return an empty string. It, the net result is the same. You're absolutely right. Great. Very good. OK, so the answer is that. So now if I wanted to print 15 stars, boom. If I want to print 20 stars, yay. The logic behind this is the same. Do you want me to go through it on the board? Hands up if you do. We're doing it. Let's go. So let's use a debugger, as always. Oh, moment. Ha, Yerevi, ha. Tama bana kankani. Okay, so, hang on. Okay, here we go. We create the function, we put it into a variable called stars. Or we name it stars. Bless you. Let's begin. We call stars with a 5. OK. The first condition, the termination condition, does it match the termination condition? No. no, it fails the termination condition. It's false. n is not equal to 0 because n is 5, right? So we continue. So in that case, we're going to return star, the string star. So we're going to return the string star. Concat this turns into a concatenation because this is a string, right? Plus or concatenate stars, what's n minus 1? Four. Four. 4. 5 minus 1, right? So 4. Let's go in. Is n 0? No. no, because it's a 4, right? Obviously. So then we do return star as a string plus stars n minus 1. 3. Good. So then we step into that function, is n0? No. Good. So then we return uh, star plus stars, 3 minus 1, 2. I should have chosen a smaller number. <laughs> is 2, 0? No, it is not. So we keep going. Good. We return. This one returns star plus pow, uh, pow, pow, stars. 2 minus 1. 1. Good. Bunch of nuts. Almost there. Is it 0? No. We return. Uh, Star plus stars. One minus one. Zero. Zero. And what does that return? It doesn't return. What is nothing? Wait. What is nothing in JavaScript? Does this return undefined? No. No. What does it exactly? Look. It returns that. If this did not exist, if it simply did return, then yes, return nothing. But it does return a string which has nothing inside. It's an empty string, right? So let's return an empty string. Now let's build it back up. OK, let's go back up our stack. And we will discuss what that means later. But you can think of a stack as one thing on top of another. In this case, well, we built the stack downward, right? 
What is the result of that? Yes? If we say star five plus a string called something, would it put a space bar between that and the If you did, I'm sorry, say that one more time. If we console log stars, which has a value five plus some string, yeah. would it put a space bar between those? No, you would have to put it yourself. Right. So you could, yeah. No, an empty space isn't empty space. It doesn't. If you want a space, create a quote with a like, t you know, enter inside the, the 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 bar between it, the space bar. If you don't do that, if you just put in empty, it will be empty. It makes sense, right? It it's logical. Okay. Other questions before we build back? Yes. Yeah. Stars, my. Uh, what do you mean stars minus one? Where? Oh, if we do negative one? Uh, you, wait, do you know the answer? Don't answer. Anyone else, if we did a negative number, what would happen? Infinite loop, yeah. Why isn't it infinite loop? Because it never equals zero. Right, because our termination condition, the condition by which we stop, will never be met. How can I change my termination condition to account for exactly what he said? Exactly. If it's less than or equal to zero, stop. That way, if you give a negative one, what will it return? <coughs> if, I, if I call negative one, negative five, let's say, what's it going to print? Empty string, right, because it will immediately break on the termination case and return an empty string. Very good. Great question, by the way. Awesome. Other comments, suggestions? OK, let's build our stack back up. So this last one returned an empty string, right? So we have an empty string here that we're concatenating star with an empty string. If you concatenate a star with an empty string, what's the result? Star. Right, so we just get a star here. So then this function here is going to return a star. We concatenate that star with that star. What do we get? Star star. Star star. Good. The result of calling this function will return star star, right? So we replace that with a star star. What happens if you concatenate star with a star star? star, star. <laughs> okay, calling this returns star star star. We replace that with <laughs> star star star. <laughs> okay. Running this, four stars. Four stars. Yeah. OK. Star, 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 star. <laughs> Running that. <laughs> star, star, star. Uh. OK. So because calling this returns that, the result of running this entire thing will return <laughs> that. <laughs> okay. Was that clear to everyone? Anyone have any questions or anything that wasn't absolutely clear? Clear? Yes. Wait, 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 hey, psh, I can't hear. Yes. Why does it stop? So that if statement, look, the if state, okay, remember this. Rit whenever you return in a function, you stop executing the function. You can't return and then keep going inside the function. A return means stop and return whatever. 
What that means is that the moment it comes here and it returns, this function no longer executes. It's returned. It's stopped. It's finished. Think of it this way. I ask you to go to a store and get me food. Let me see if I can figure this out. OK. And then someone else asks you to go, hang on. <laughs> ah, I can't think of, OK. Uh, yeah, OK, OK, I got one, I got one. I ask you to either do 20 push-ups or 10 sit-ups. If you do 10 sit-ups, you can come to me and say, I'm done. You don't have to do the push-ups. You're done. You finished your work, right? That was a bad example. <laughs> Look, the point is this. Return means you're done. It's you returned, right? That means you don't, you're no longer working. This function has finished. Now here's the thing, here's the trick I think that many of you may be confused with. If I do recursion, so for example, let's do const b and then return b plus, does anyone know what this will return? Remember recursion means that the same function will run every time I call stars. If you return a star one, two stars one, three stars and one. So you might be asking yourself why. Okay. So we can how can we find out why? Debugger. Exactly. Alright, so let's break out our debugger. Everyone can see the debugger code? Yes? People in the back? OK? Huh? Good. All right, so let's step in. We create our function. We call our function. Is n5? No. We then call stars n minus 1. Is n5? No, it's not. We call stars n minus 1. We do that. We call stars n minus 1. We do that. We call stars n minus 1. We do that. We call stars n minus 1. Then we do that. We now return empty string. So let's see what we're returning. So we return empty string, right? Hang on. So now empty string was concatenated with a star, right? So now b in this context has a star. Wait, what? Oh, sorry, hang on. OK, good. Now b has a star, which we concatenate with a 1. Huh? Wait, wait. Oh, no. Sorry, it's returning star 1. No, that's right. It's returning star 1. Sorry, b, yes. B, remember, b is a constant. We're not changing b. B had a star, we're simply concatenating B with a 1, and we're returning the result, which is star 1. I think that's fine, right? Yes? Yeah. Good. So let's keep going. Now in this case, the result of that had returned, oh, this had returned star 1, right? We just returned star 1. We then concatenated that with a star, star plus star 1, so we got B as star star 1. We then did b plus 1. So star star 1 plus 1 will return star star 1 1. That's right. There it is. It's returning star star 1 1. Let's keep going. So now b has star star 1 1. Sorry. Because, so this returns star star 1 1. We concatenated star to the left of it, which gave us star 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 1 1. Yes? yes? We then do star 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 1 1 concatenated with a 1. What will that give me? Three stars, three ones. Good. There it is. Star 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 1 1 1. So here's the thing. When I looked at the code intuitively, I couldn't guess that it was going to be stars and ones either. 
And yet, look how important, look how useful a debugger is, right? Once you go through it, it's obvious. Now it's obvious, right? Okay, because you're, you're concatenating star on the left side, and you're concatenating one on the right side. So it makes sense that one builds out on right and stars build out on left. Yes? You said that if uh, the function returns, yeah. it's still working. But then it started returning the other. OK. So look, did this, does that return? Is there a return in this row? No. No, right? Which means it keeps going. However, I think what you meant was, hang on, let me do one more iteration. Oh, we're already returning, hang on. Okay, let me give another example. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, watch this. I, s I understand your confusion, I got it. Watch this, everyone. Suppose I have a function, const f1, it is going to return one. I have another function, f2. It is going to return, uh, it's going to do const b f1, const c f1, it is then going to return a2. I don't know why, it just is. In fact, let me put uh, const d, hang on, const d f1. And here let me return 5. OK. This is a tri tricky question, but it's not that bad. If I call f2, what will happen? Anyone guess? What will f2 return? Yeah, OK, so let's go through this. We go to f2, we call f1, right? Now notice how f1 has a return in it. Pay attention to this. This return does not return from this function. It returns from that function. Every function has its own set of returns, right? So this function, you're right, it's returning from here, but it's still going to keep going. So this we'll call that, which will return 1. So this will be 1 that will be placed in B. We will call it again. It will come here, return 1. This will get a 1 and be put into C. We then return 5. Stop. No more. You understand how this return does not modify this return? Every function has its own return. Did that make sense to you? So now when you think about recursion, every time you call yourself, you're in a new state. Calling yourself is no different than calling another function. Watch. Watch this. Remember the stars? const uh, stars. Someone help me write the stars function. Stars. Ah. Talk to me. Remember that? Oh, sorry. What does that do? Infinite loop. It loops forever. It never returns, right? It just keeps cycling and cycling and cycling. Good. So let's do n minus 1. Now, watch this. Instead of calling myself, let me make another method. Const stars, stars 1, which takes an n. Oh, hang on. Let me copy this. And here, let me call stars 1. Did I change anything? Is the answer the same? Yeah. But now you can see, when you call stars 1, it's going to return. But its return is not going to modify the returns here, right? This has its own lo local return as this, as does this. Does that make sense? OK, now think of it exactly the same way when you call yourself. When you call yourself, every time you call yourself, you begin a new call. Make sense? So every time you call yourself, the end becomes new, the returns are now fresh, et cetera, et cetera. It's like calling another function. It just happens to be the same function. Yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. 
Good. So your homework assignments are going to be mainly about recursion. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, a quick note. Um, so this is going to be your first, hey, pay attention so you don't yell at me later. Um, so this is going to be your first assignment where in addition to just explaining something, which will be a part of it, of course, you will have to explain the code that you wrote. Okay, so you're going to have a programming part where you have to write the code, and then you'll have the video part where you have to explain what you wrote, how it works, why you did what you did, etc. It's like do blah 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 blah. Shush. How's that? Done? Yes. So the rule for Hang on, I'll, I'll get to, so I know there's a, there's a, yeah. Yeah, you can use whatever tools you want to, as long as it's, you can clearly explain what you did and why, use anything you want. Use a debugger, use slides, use a whiteboard, use balls that you're juggling, I don't care. Just do something that explains it, that's it. But just explain it clearly, yes. As soon as I can, I'm working on it. I want to do a good job. Yeah, uh, there was, yes. When is the deadline? When is the I'll tell you in the post. Don't don't ask questions. I'll every, I'll post everything. I promise. I'll post it on Moodle. Moodle will have the deadline and everything. And then there's going to be no confusion. Yes. You can use anything you want. I don't care. Yes. Any other questions? Okay. Oh yes. I'll tell you in the wait for it. Man. It's. I mean, the overall subject is going to be recursion. But the details about what the content needs to be will come in the, in the thing. Um, remember, again, this is a rule for every video you will ever make for this class. For every video you make, your, it has to be your voice. And we have to be able to see your voice coming out of your mouth. <laughs> so that means face and voice together. Yes. Yeah, that's right. But everyone has to have their own video. Other sort of random questions about that? Another. Wait, wait, a few more. Hang on, I'll let you go in one more. So wait, 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 guys, listen. Another thing. So for those of you who know, raise your hands if you know either what a var is or a let is. OK. All of you, be very careful on this assignment. I've put it in, bi I, in big letters, and when I post it, you will see it. For every var or let you use, I will deduct points. We do not use var or let. Everything is a constant. No, that means no for loops, no while, none of that crap. Recursion, yes. Yeah, just don't modify the variable. I'm so confident! Hey! John, merci, Chad. Bravo.